On my adventures this week, I have come across this weird shaped oat milk and it's a tetrahedron so it's made out of four triangles. Why would you make milk this shape? Anytime you're thinking about packaging there is an interplay between volume and surface area and this milk is 20 milliliters and I have no idea what the surface area is but because it's a tetrahedron I know it's pretty inefficient. So as you'd expect the bigger the volume the more surface area you're going to need the more packaging you're going to need to hold that milk and you can see this if we graph volume against surface area so as the volume goes up the surface area goes up. Up, unsurprising and um, but out of the platonic solids the tetrahedron is the worst any of the other platonic solids would give you more milk for less packaging less surface area best would be a ball of milk but I'm assuming nobody wants milk globes <laughs> That is if you are just producing one of these. If you're making loads of them, the net of a tetrahedra, the netrahedra, the tetnet, is the only net of a platonic solid that doesn't have like a weird little gap somewhere. The net of the tetrahedra is just a triangle, so it tiles. Yeah, you could do it with a line, but there would be like a parallelogram. And that would, that would tile as well. Which means if you have like a big sheet of cardboard or whatever your packaging is, and you want to make efficient use and have no waste cardboard, in that case, the tetrahedron net is looking pretty good. But looking at the construction of this, I'm fairly sure what they do is basically one big tube of milk and then they crimp it, um, you know, horizontal and vertical alternating. Which means it would look something like this and then they would just kind of cut off all of the different tetrahedra to get those milks. Then I noticed that this is not even a regular tetrahedra, which means if they're producing them in one big long line of interlinked tetrahedra, which aren't regular, I can only assume that the artist's intention when designing this packaging was that we create a milk flexahedron. <laughs> So if you take six tetrahedra and join them in a loop like this, um, they have this cool flexing property. It very much does not work with regular tetrahedra. It doesn't leave enough of a gap in the middle, but this works perfectly. Flexible shapes are something that I've always found really interesting. And I wondered, does this count as one polyhedra? Like, no, it's six tetrahedra joined together. So I wondered if there were any flexible polyhedrons which were one single polyhedron. And there is. It looks like this. The net looks kind of like a crab. And this can flex into two different states and it maintains the same volume throughout and none of the faces bend or do anything weird. Are you ready to see the flex? <laughs> That's what it does. I mean, <laughs> that's it's flexing. But the fact that none of the faces are actually bending and it's one, one shape and the volume is maintained. Mildly cool to look at, way more mathematically difficult to prove. And obviously the gold standard of flexible shapes is the flexagon. So this is a trihexaflexagon. The motion works something like this. You can just keep flipping it over and over and over. And if you have never seen any of Vi Hart's videos on flexagons, I am more than honored to point you in that direction. You have some fun ahead of you. Something that's always irked me is that people say that this shape Oh no, there's milk in there. No, I'm milky. Something that's always irked me is people saying that this shape, the flexahedron, made out of six tetrahedra, um, is analogous to a 3D version of this shape, the flexagon, or the trihexaflexagon. And I can see it because they both, you know, look like hexagons on the outline. They're both made entirely of triangles. But this one, when you make it, it does involve a little half twist and that makes it a squished down Mobius loop. Whereas this is more like a crimped up torus. But fear not, there is a flexahedron which is also a Mobius loop. Look at that, it is beautiful. I think there are two different versions of this. It can be made of seven tetrahedra or nine tetrahedra. And it has that half twist to it that a Mobius loop requires. So Team in Japan made this. I highly, highly recommend making one yourself. 
So yeah, there are a bunch of different flexible shapes for you to have fun with. Please do print out the nets, enjoy them. I wanted to end on a pun, but it's surprisingly difficult to think of a oat milk slash geometry based pun. So the best I've got is me and three friends enjoying this flexitedron. Okay, three, two, one, milk. <laughs> As with last week, this video is my entry for the round two semi-final maybe um, of the big internet math off. If you're seeing this video in the first day of it going up, head over to the A periodical, check out the big internet math off and look at both pitches and decide which one you're going to vote for, this one or Dave Richardson's one. And I have to say I'm a massive fan of Dave Richardson's work. I think, but I can't be quite sure, that the reason that I know of Truchet tiles, something which I have willingly put many, many hours of my life into, might be from an old Dave Richardson post. I'm a big fan of their work. I have made a little zine of Truchet tiles, um, so I do recommend checking out Dave's post because I think it's going to be fire playing around with some truche tiles, playing around with some flexahedra, why not merge the both? I would love to say, oh my gosh, a Mobius loop flexahedra with truche tiles on it. Let's make it happen. I am genuinely, I'm overjoyed, surprised. I'm, I'm so grateful and appreciative of the people who actually signed up to my Patreon last week. Um, thank you so much. It's scary and cool, and I hope that we can do something like fun and nerdy. Okay, have fun with that, Matt. Love you, bye. It's like milking a mascara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beautiful.